Let's talk about cognitive biases. These are mental shortcuts that our automatic brain creates, more often than not outside of our awareness, and that might hinder our assessment and decisions. The first bias I will tell you about is called priming bias or priming effect. Well, priming effect is not yet a bias by default, but I will use these two terms interchangeably priming effect and priming bias for the sake of simplicity. Before I explain the bias itself, let's look at another theoretical premise on cognition. Premise number three is as follows Human brain works in an associative way. Literally, everything is interconnected in your neural system. All the neurons are connected via synapses, and any signal can get from any neuron to any other neuron. Just like you can get from any town in your country to any other town or city. No town can be cut off of road network in most of countries. But some clusters of neurons have more connections with other clusters of neurons. This is because some knowledge in your brain has been repeatedly linked with specific outcomes or some other knowledge for some time. For example, a nurse associates a hospital with work related concepts, such as night shifts, salary, colleagues, and bosses, more than with pain or anything else. While for you, an image, or a smell of a hospital mainly triggers images of some painful experience, based on a memory or a fear of such. These associations are evoked automatically, outside of intent and awareness. It is based on this mechanism of associative links that priming effect works. To illustrate this premise of associative thinking, let's play a little game. I am sure you know this one. I will give you a word, and you need to tell me within two seconds what other word or phrase comes to your mind when you hear this word. For example, I say, dog. You might reply, cat. I say, beach, and you say, summer. There will be ten words. So, let's start. Are you ready? Go. School. Home. Money. Love. Friend. Party. Pain. Star. Gift. Sport. That's it. Game over. It is crucial that you reply quickly. Only in this case the answer is authentically based on triggered associations. Otherwise, you might reply with a sociably desired answer. For instance, you might try to reply with a fancy word to surprise an experimenter, or to appear smart. Or you might want to reply with a word that you think is the most common one, in order to appear normal. So, how did you answer, if you were not thinking because you didn't have time for it? Associatively. If you recently felt homesick, you would reply something like, homesick or sad, or miss, or family, to the word home. If you happen to have a special friend, and especially if you were in touch with, or thought of this friend recently, it is very likely that to the word, friend, you replied with the name of this person. If you practice a specific sport, or if you are a big fan of some specific sport, then when I said, sport, it is very likely that you replied with the name of the sport that you practice, such as football, or tennis. If you are neither a practitioner, nor a big fan, it is likely that you replied with something more general, for example, words like competition, match, game, and so on. So, when replying quickly, your brain, largely in an automatic mode, retrieved an association which was the most strongly connected with the trigger word. Now, imagine something. Imagine that when the words were appearing on the screen one by one, there were also images appearing next to them in the same time. Like this. How would that affect your answers? Would your answers be authentically yours, based on your personal associations? Or would your answers be influenced? Hard to argue that they would be influenced. This is because our minds are not immune to the priming effect. Our associative links are constantly activated and reactivated by what we perceive around us, by other people, by mass media, and so on. This is what priming is about. The definition of priming effect, as it appears on Wikipedia, is the following. Priming is a technique whereby exposure to one stimulus influences a response to a subsequent stimulus, without conscious guidance or intention. I just want to make a brief remark on this definition. Priming is a technique in case if it is practiced deliberately, to influence others. But priming is also a mental shortcut that just exists. 
We are constantly primed by not only other people, but by experiences and the environment that surround us at a specific moment. So, talking about priming is a technique. There is even a verb, to prime. One person can prime another one for something. Mass media can prime public for something. Priming as an activity as an influence technique. It involves activating certain associative links in the mind, or literally, in the brain of people, in order to incline these people towards one or another opinion, or decision, etc. To help you understand how priming works, let me give you an example of how priming works in practice. As a latent persuasive technique. A psychologist Robert Cialdini, a well known guru of persuasion, developed a concept of persuasion that mainly builds on the concept of priming effect. He gives an interesting example of manipulative priming. A job candidate came to an interview. The interviewer asked the interviewee if he had any questions to ask before the interview started. And the interviewee asked a question that primed the interviewer in a positive way. A question that increased the chances of a good offer significantly, but in an unconscious way. What was the question that the interviewee asked? Think about it for a moment. He asked, Why did you decide to invite me for this interview? That's all. To reply to this, the interviewee had to give reasons, all of which should be related to the candidate's strengths. Simply by evoking this positive ideas in the mind of the interviewer, the interviewee pre disposed him to be favorable. Or, as Cialdini puts it, the interviewer was pre suaded. Here is one more example of priming effect in action. There was a famous experiment when people were asked to make a decision whether to purchase or not a couch online on a fictional website. One of the websites had a background image that depicted fluffy clouds. Another website had a background image that depicted coins. The results of the experiment showed that people on the first website, the one with clouds, on average, were more likely to purchase a couch. Moreover, they were more likely to purchase expensive ones. On the other hand, people on the other website, the one with coins, were slightly less likely to purchase a couch, and much less likely to purchase an expensive one. Sounds too simple, but it's true. An image with clouds primed people to think about lightness and softness, and thereby inclined them to purchase soft and expensive couches. An image of coins primed people to think about money, maybe their personal budgets or incomes, and thereby inclined people to rather not buy a couch at all, or to buy a cheaper one. The expression primed to think is not correct, of course. Because priming works on unconscious level, it is an automatic process, outside of awareness. I believe that you should have rather good understanding of priming effect by now. To test your understanding and to internalize this knowledge even more, I recommend that you take a quiz that goes right after this video. After that, in the next video, I will tell you about two more biases that are closely related to the priming effect. Specifically, availability bias and anchoring effect.